Welcome to the Chapter 1 finale of Drama. Thanks to everyone who's been listening, subscribing, liking, commenting. It means a lot to us. We'll be taking a break from Drama for a bit to give Ian some time to get the second chapter ready. Keep an eye out, though. In the meantime, we'll be releasing a few one-shots and mini-campaigns. In the city of Drakehaven, a group of neighbors investigate the mountains nearby after a vent of lava explodes from the fragmented rocks below. Speaking with the mayor, he tells them about their history, about how the dragons were once the keepers of the land, and after multiple centuries, they may be making their return. A mini campaign by Ty Sheets. First episode coming soon. Playing as a group of goblins, our only source of food is color. Sucking our specific color from an object or creature, it is left dried and decayed, left with no color but a hint of grayscale, as we pat our bellies and continue to rampage the world. Losing our powers from a great wizard sent by the nearby kingdom, we start off in a black and white forest as our goblins are searching for anything to keep them alive. Playing as the villains, we escape the forest as we hunt down the greatest color of all, love. Yeah, right. We're coming straight for the source. Welcome to the Rainbow Goblins by Ian Jones. Terra Kortsberg is famous for two things. One, its impressive city wall system. And two, its military and champion program. These champions are known to be among the best of the best in terms of strength, bravery, intelligence. However, citizens are starting to doubt their ability after there have been no attacks in decades. There are stories of the undead clawing their way out of the caves in the shadowy forest, attacking the civilians while the world was asleep. This is why Terry Kortsberg needed the extraordinary walls and help from the warriors, sorcerers, and clerics among us. However, their life is a myth at this moment, until Egrin, the paladin of the group, returns from a hidden mission, unknown to the other champions. Meeting with the four, an ancient group of citizens that deal the cards of Terra Kortsberg, the rest of the champions are shown the reason of Egrin's retreat. He returns from the mountains with an undead dragon egg, a lich that when born could destroy the world they've created. While the four cast a ritual to remove the curse, the champions are met with the owners of the egg. From kobolds to skeletons, the undead have risen again. Led by a vampiric man and woman, they declare that they will begin their assault unless their egg is returned to them. As panic begins to spread amongst the public, our champions take their place. With the ability of flight, they soar above the mile upon mile of city wall, with voices booming that they will not back down. Without hesitation, a group of vampires attack one of the Terra Kortsberg sky ships, tearing the life away from a champion in training, a young girl named Maeve. Ripping the heads off the vampires, our champions are now a reality, as war has begun. Besieged by Jesse Wagner, a four-part campaign. All right, everybody, your good friend, uh, Gundren Thunderbrand here. Well, the lads came back from uh, from the mine the other day, looking a bit worse for wear, seemingly in a, a pretty bad mood. But job got done, chased away that piece of shit black spider, cleared out the rest of the cave. So me and my brother will get it back up and running in uh, no time at all. I happened to see uh, Sildar talking to him on their way out. Overheard him uh, an application, well, more than application, gave them liberty to join the Lord's Alliance, which they happily accepted. <clears throat> Don't know how long they'll last inside the Lord's Alliance, knowing they're uh, proclivities for 
<clears throat> you know, murder and stealing and such. But we'll see how it goes. The half elf seemed a little bit more down than usual. I heard him muttering something about, uh, I don't know, some big red genie asking him to bring him a bunch of stuff. That's a bit outside my pay grid. But last I heard, they were on their way to Schleim. Just uh, one little kerfuff- kerfluffle on the way <clears throat> with an ogre. But knowing them shouldn't have been much of a problem. And that leads us to, if we're starting from the top, then you guys are just, again, right outside uh, the wooden walls of Bordania. Yeah, yeah I'm, uh, we're going to walk up to the guards, uh, flash our badges. We're members of the Lord's Alliance passing through. Uh, we encountered an ogre on the way. Is there somewhere we can maybe drop off the trophy that we had collected from it? You know of anyone who's given out bounties for that kind of stuff? Three foot long ogre penis comes out of the bag and just slaps in the sand. Just It's quite an entertaining sight too, with you being only about three feet tall. You sort of have to pull it out. It's almost like a snake in a bottle, you know? <laughs> right. I it is a penis the size of me. Like I sort of cocks his head a little bit taking a look at it. Um well there's no particular bounties I know of. There is a hunter's guild. In town, I, they might be interested in it. What kind of things do they like to hunt there at the Hunters Guild? Uh, well, all manners of monsters. They're mostly sort of, you know, trophy hunters. It is kind of a big dick swinging contest with what they hunt, so, you know, you may fit right in. Well, it's perfect. And uh, is there anything we need to be on the lookout for either here in town or on our way to Schleem? You have been having any issues with anything on the road or otherwise? Well, nothing particular. Everyone's a bit on edge with the war and everything, but yeah, still mostly safe with inside the borders. All right. No, uh, no issues with cults or people in masks, anything like that. Oh, there's people in masks running around all over the place in this <laughs> damn world. But as far as cults. None that I could think of. Uh, is there anywhere in town we can possibly resupply while we're here? Well, it depends what you're looking for. Uh, potions. Probably not armor or anything too heavy, because uh, we don't plan on sticking around very long. But well, Do you have a weapon smith in the egg? Wouldn't mind looking oh, at got plenty. Lots of ore comes down from the mountains here. Wouldn't mind some of the fancier ores. If you're looking for a fancy smithy, there is a place I know called the Golden Anvil. It's a bit pricey, but the quality's good. Right. Money's never been a problem for me. I remind you, I am wearing a thick gold chain. Big lion's emblem on it. At this point, I have acquired a ring for every finger on my left hand. <laughs> Working on my right hand. I'm, I'm going for a... Uh, a Mr. T motif here. You're, you're going to get mugged in one of these towns one day. Go for it. Fuck around and find out. <laughs> I'll pity the fool. <laughs> Is there uh, anywhere for a leather armor, perhaps? Uh, there should be. Maybe check out... Uh, what's the name of the general store I had written down? Well, I heard of a place called the Adult Fun Time World. They might sell some leather suits. Adult fun time world. <laughs> there's a tanner down, uh, I can't quite think of a name, but there's a tanner down uh, near Shanria Plaza. That'd be the place I would go to find some leather armor. Bordon's, uh, you can tell from, even just from the outside, Bordon's probably, aside from Stowell, I mean, it, it's a fairly large city. Maybe not capital city large, but... Is there a tavern here by chance? Maybe like the, the white bunny or like the purple tiger? There is a tavern here. Which, out of everything, I forgot to think of a name for the tavern. Wait, just pick a color and a noun. No, you may be too self-conscious about it. 
<laughs> nah, I can't do it anymore. There is a place, uh, actually not far from the Tanners in uh, Shangri-La Plaza. The Lounging Goblin, I think it's called. A lot of travelers seem to stop there. Do we want to split up when we get into town? Uh, if y'all want to check out the shopping-related stuff, and I'll, I'll take the uh, trophy to the Hunter's Guild. Then we can meet up at the, the tavern then. Yeah, I'm just gonna make my way to the tavern. I don't, I don't think I need anything. Um, I th- maybe I play a little ditty while I'm there. Uh, I'll turn to the guards then. Thank you for your help and for everything. We're not gonna be in town long, but uh, if anything happens, you know, like previously mentioned, we're members of the Lords Alliance. Want to give them a little wink, and uh, we're happy to help with anything. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. You guys have a pleasant stay in board on. Oh, we plan to. I'm going to wink at the guard. <laughs> we all wink as we go in. Everyone, everyone's just winking at them as they go inside. <laughs> all right, I'm going to head towards wherever I think this Hunter's Guild. Okay, so um, glad you guys all walk in. You just go down this sort of... Uh, this is somewhat well-paved boulevard um, leading into a somewhat larger town square, which is cramped, but uh, relatively well-kept. Um, and, you know, from the square, you can sort of see the branch and roads and stuff. There's a market nearby. Um, there's a smaller plaza where there's lots of people smelling, selling, excuse me, like small knickknacks and like, you know, street food, that sort of thing. You ask around and you are pointed towards the Hunter's Lodge, uh, which is almost like a big wooden log cabin looking structure. Um, it's sort of adorned on the outside with different skulls and, you know, pelts of various creatures and stuff. So you walk inside. Um, it's sort of set up. It's kind of like an, almost like an open floor plan. There's a, there's a hearth in the center. There's various, uh, various races, various people sort of sitting inside, having a drink, um, talking amongst themselves. I'm inside. It's sort of more of the same lining. The walls are, <clears throat> Some fairly impressive looking skulls, um, a lot of which you don't recognize. And there is sort of a counter off on the, so you walk into the hearth that's sort of in front of you, there's kind of a counter on the other side of the hearth. And there at the counter? There is. There is a very muscular human. Like his sleeves are kind of torn off. He's got this like leather sort of armor on. Long red hair, long red beard. Um, he's got like a battle axe strapped to his back. <clears throat> and he's behind the counter, um, just talking to some other people that are up there with him. Howdy. I'll walk up. I uh, was told this way is the place to maybe come to if I had a trophy I was interested in turning in. He sort of <clears throat> looks you up and down. He, he seems he's got like scars on his face. He seems quite serious. Um, he sort of looks you up and down with a serious expression for a second before he sort of breaks open to this wide, friendly grin. <clears throat> From over the bar, sort of claps a hand on your shoulder. <clears throat> and I mate, you've walked into the right place. All right. Uh, how do y'all, how, what do y'all think about ogres? Well, they're big and ugly. Well, uh, I guess more so on a, on a monetary side of things. What's the... The price fetch for a trophy from one of those. We encountered a pretty large one on the way here. I think you're going to be mighty impressed with what we pulled off it. Well, I can't say ogres are too impressive, but show me what you got. I'm going to, out of my bag, pull out this giant schlong and just slap it right onto the counter. Sort of all the people at the counter sort of, sort of just like staring at it. <laughs> Before they all sort of break into sort of like loud laughter. Like, well, I can't remember anyone ever bringing in a trophy like that. I'll put it that way. You know, usually people bring in the head, but... You're not wrong. But we figured it'd be a little bit on the more rare side, and, you know, could be a fun story to tell for people coming in. I guess for the novelty, maybe I can give you a bit more money than maybe I normally would for an ogre pelt, but... (laughs) The going rate for ogre... Maybe not as high as you hoped. Something like that, I uh, maybe fetch you around 
20, 25 gold. All right. I'm I'm all right with the uh, 25 gold. And uh, what what exactly is the process like to become a member of the Hunter's Guild? Is it just in this town or are you guys all over the place? Sort of a, I wouldn't say we're related, so more of a loose coalition. There's, you know, sometimes bigger meetings and sometimes guilds work together and that sort of thing. Gotcha. All right, I was just curious. But, uh, yeah, well, 25 gold's fine with me. My uh, companions will, will love to split it between the five of us. Four of us. He'll sort of, he'll sort of take it off the counter and examine it. And he'll, he'll sort of put it on one of the shelves behind, uh, behind the counter where he's standing. And he'll bend down and takes up that whole shelf. Yeah, pretty much. It's just, <laughs> just laying across the whole thing. Um, he'll pick up like a lockbox from behind the counter and count out 25 gold pieces, sort of slide them across the counter to you. Well, much obliged. I'm just going to take off and start heading toward the tavern. Just for my own visualization here, because I, I don't know why I didn't think of it before. What does an ogre penis look like? Because, like, ogres are, are pretty, like, pretty humanoid. Have like, you ever seen a horse penis? Um, yeah, a, a couple it's times. Like, it's, it's like a horse penis. It just kind of drags along the ground, yeah. Oh, does it, like, don't, does it don't go? Don't Google it. Don't Google it. <laughs> what, ogre penis <laughs> or horse penis? Oh. <laughs> oh, it's just a lot of Shrek with just a weird bulbous thing. That's every penis, though, isn't it? What? Besides the Shrek Whoa. part. Wait a minute, what? What, <laughs> what does your penis look like, bro? <laughs> does yours have Shrek on it? <laughs> I, I, I do. <laughs> You've seen horse penises before, Derek. I sent you that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start with me. <laughs> FBI is going to be here in a minute. <laughs> Mr. Andy. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. <laughs> All right, we're done it's with It's kind of leathery. Now. It's sort of, so you know how, like, the, you know, the ogre skin no. is quite leathery and, and thick? It's so, like that. A lot of foreskin. <laughs> yeah, like 90% foreskin. 10% urethra. Okay. Okay, who wants to go next? <laughs> um, I suppose... I, I, I mean, I'm not muted. <laughs> okay. Archie, Archie and Mooney, uh, are our stores somewhat closely? Not necessarily. They're not like... Right, mate. So, I imagine there's a shopping district, but I'm sure this... Uh, this fancy a smithy might be able to hook you up with some, maybe maybe a, a, some more classy leather, leather. You don't need to buy the cheapest cheap anymore. Uh, that's what I hope so. See, I have so much um, fur already. I'm thinking uh, not a favorite, but a, maybe a hide or something. Uh, something thicker. Some that, with some flash to it. I could go for some flash. You stick with me, pal. I would like to um, grab uh, gifts for everyone. Uh, do you have any any ideas? Uh, especially since last time you guys went shopping, I got this uh, mask. Right here. I, I think we can we can find some things for everybody. All right, I'll follow. All right. Well, I guess we'll start at the smithy. All right. So you guys uh, <laughs> go down the road. You do see eventually um, the outside of the smithy has, <clears throat> as the name would imply, a uh, sign with the golden anvil on it swinging back and forth. All right. Um, I'll enter. So from the outside, it looks, um, you know, being told that it's kind of a, a higher end, it, it does look quite shabby from the outside. But as you walk in, you notice that everything is very neat and very tidy. <clears throat> All the tools and all the different ores are like neatly stored and labeled. What looks to be a young apprentice sort of sweeping the floor. And you see um, an older dwarf who's hanging some stuff up on like racks, it's like different weapons and armors and such. Um, you do notice <laughs> the, the weapons look well made, but also uh, slightly gaudy. There's a lot more like inlaid gems and such than you would see at your normal smithy. Boy, are you the man that makes all these fine, beautiful weapons? 
so subtle in all the decoration. Aye, that'd be me. Then I suppose you're the man I need to talk to. <clears throat> well, you see, I'm a bit of a, a traveling... I suppose I'll, I'll go as far as say, to hear, say a hero now. Um, member of the, the Lord's Alliance. I think it's time for me to, to look for a new weapon. I've been relying on the knives. I'm going to pull out two daggers, spin them, put them back. But uh, I think it's... I'd, I'd like to branch out with something maybe a, a little bit longer if you get my draft. Looking for maybe a rapia if you have any uh, in stock. Possibly something a little bit nicer than the uh, average bear. He sort of looks you up and down. <laughs> He's like, well, a little bit longer m- might be as long as you. Right, yeah, that's the thing. I, I, I am a just a, a wee lad, so, I mean, just a short fella. But, um, don't don't let that get that confused for you. But if you have maybe something, maybe designed as a as like a sidearm for the normal person, but perfect for me. He sort of looks you up and down. He's like, "Well, here's what I think I can do for you." <clears throat> he'll sort of rummage through. Well, he'll go back behind the counter into the back room. You can hear him sort of rummaging around. He'll come back with. Um, it's longer than your dagger. Not quite as... You've seen Troggy's a rapier before. It's not quite as long as Trog's rapier, which would probably be a bit too long for you to use. Right. But what it appears to be is a long, thin dagger that has sort of... Um, what do you call them? Sort of protruding thin wings on the outside. Well, this here is a... Well, generally call this a parian dagger. But it's perfect for thrusting, and might be quite perfect for your size as well. All right, I'd like to take it and kind of swish it around. How does it feel? It feels very well crafted, very well balanced. Okay. It's not quite as gaudy as the other ones. There's not as much space for gaudiness on this. Damn. Right, my ah. Uh, would you be able to maybe rework the hill, throw some some more gems? I I really like your work here. I could do. It's going to cost you a bit extra, though. Unless you'd be providing the gems. And knock it down a little bit. And I'm going to pull out a bag of miscellaneous gems. Okay. <laughs> and just plop in this hand. I'll tell you what. I mean, use, use what you need, but I'd like... I'm, I'm just actually just going to pull out like like five or six Gems and hand them to him. <laughs> okay. no, I'm not going to hand them out a bag of gems. There's a whole. They're going to come back. It's totally covered. <laughs> Just bedazzled. Bedazzled. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to turn to Moody and then say, oh, "Would you like to ask about your arm?" Yeah. So I'll say at this moment, Mooney has just walked in. Uh, I was letting Archie take care of his business first. When I'm outside the uh, building, though, as I'm walking in, the civilians, do I still yes. notice them staring at me, or does do I see more common in this area? Um, it's something I haven't checked on in a while, and I was curious. You see less staring, but this, people seem slightly uneasy around you for... Some reason. Mm. Mooney at this point is has been dealing with a lot, but is also trying to put on a smile, trying to say hi to kids, and noticing this, I'm kind of backing away a bit, seeing it, it's a little uneasy still. Uh, so I'll walk inside. Uh, hello, uh, Mr. Dwarfman. Oh, it looks like uh, Archie, uh, great sword. Uh, I was looking for a uh, some kind of uh, hide armor, if you have any, or anything uh, nearby, uh, flush with the gems. <laughs> hide armor, well, uh, I've not got anything made specifically out of hide. I've got a bit of studded leather. That could work as well. Uh, what's it look like? Um, he'll sort of direct your attention to uh, some models, where one is wearing... <clears throat> Uh, leather armor with these 
metal studs on it uh, going down the front and the back. And on on the center of each stud, there is like a small gemstone on each one, giving it that sort of auspicious look. Mm, nice. And uh, what is the color of the of the leather? Uh, the leather is just regular uh, tanned leather. The the studs appear to be steel. Uh, it looks like um, Archie needs some work done with his sword. Uh, would you mind taking uh, this uh, leather armor and dyeing it more of a how do I want to say a darkish red? Darkish red? I could do that. Might have to add on maybe one or two extra gold for it, but you can do it. That's oh, fine with me. Also, do you have any um, any special uh, Bordon uh, gifts? Say if someone was coming to uh, visit. A t-shirt or a coaster magnet. Shop class. <laughs> <laughs> Just go next door to the gift shop. I will do. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, something in mind I could, you know, custom craft something for you. Oh, not a bad idea. Do you make, uh, how do I put it, uh, some kind of um, mini figurine? Mini figurines? Yeah, it's a bit outside my wheelhouse. You know what? If you go down back to the, um, you must have walked through the town square to get here. There should be a little adjacent plaza. <clears throat> There's all manner of knickknacks down that way. I might be able to find you something good. Uh, yes, uh, I'll do that. Uh, I'll be back uh, whenever uh, you're set with the armor. Sure, between the, uh, between the parry and dagger and the armor, you lads come back uh, tomorrow morning. Should be all done for you. Works for me. For the sake of story, I found my gems. I gave him three garnets. To put on my okay. Got it. So I'll sort of sweep those up and put them in his pocket. Alrighty, let's go over to Trog since he was going to the inn. So Trog, you're going to make your way to the lounging goblin. Um, as I approach the uh, the lounging goblin, is it just are they swinging doors or is it like a like, what's the entrance look like? Um, it looks a bit shabby from the outside as well. Um, they do have those Western saloon-style swinging doors. I'm going to walk... Walk under them. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I walk, <laughs> walk towards it, and I just slowly push it open, and uh, I want to look at all the people that are inside. <laughs> okay, so as you go in... Again, it's kind of weird. A lot of the buildings from the outside look shabby, but when you go inside it, they're, they're quite nice. It's just more to do with maybe the age of the town, more than anything. It's a little bit on the small side, maybe you would think, but it looks hygienic. Um, it's laid out in a sort of <laughs> in, a, in a sensible fashion. There's a lot of spouts behind the bar, and weirdly enough, there's a large, basically cow fur rug that is laid out on the tavern floor, almost you know like a bearskin rug, except weird. It's, it's the cow for some reason. Anyway, there, there's a few tables of people in there. It's still quite early. I want to... Is there a barkeep there? Uh, there is. <laughs> so you see behind the uh, counter, you'd assume to be the bartender, a young adult woman who is missing two fingers on her left hand. She's uh, currently taking an order from one of the other customers. I'm going to slowly make my way towards the bar and just... Uh... You know, hop on to one of the bar stools and wait for uh, for her to come over to me. Yeah, so as she finishes up with the other customer, she she looks at you, does kind of a double take, um, seeing a frog now sitting at her bar. She walks over and asks what what she can do for you. Hey, uh, how you doing? Um, my name's uh, Trog the Frog. Nice to meet you. Don't call me a toad. You got a lovely establishment here. You, I mean, you're like uh, you know, picture perfect. I gotta say, um, you know, you just... She, you she know. blushes blushes a little bit as you say that. So listen, um, I know it's a little bit early here in the morning, but, uh, you know, there's no time like the present, I always say. You think uh, you think I might be able to get, like, a little beverage here? And, um, hey, you know, I'd like, to, I'd like to offer a little proposition for you here. I am, 
I'm what uh, some may call, or everyone actually calls me, a performer. And uh, I can put on a little uh, little show for you here. I can play one song uh, just to get the get the the mood going here in the morning, and uh, maybe uh, draw in a little bit of people here. What do you say? Well, she looks around the bar. I prefer running out of supplies rather than not. And at the moment, it looks like uh, I'm not going to be running out anytime soon. So by tonight, you get this place going pretty well. <clears throat> Give you cut of the profits. Perfect. Now. Do you have, a? Uh, is there uh, any rooms or anything that we could stay at here? Or do you got like a pot that filled with water that I could, you know, maybe lounge in for a quick second? We do have rooms. There's, it's also a cooking pot. Well, um, I'll tell you what, you know, pour me a drink here, let me down it, and then I'll, I'll put on a little bit of a performance. Side note here, I did, I, I lost uh, the um, saxophone. So this song is uh, going to be uh, kind of light. Did she pour me the drink? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm smelling like this meat that I can't tell if it's still good to eat or not. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Down the hashes. Uh, it's like jerky. It should be okay. It's basically jerky. Yeah, she'll go, to the, she'll go behind one of the taps, pour you out a drink, and hand it over to you. I grab the drink, just down it in one shot, and then... I pull out my bagpipes that are going to make a very interesting sound, almost sound like a piano instead. Um, <laughs> but then I'm going to start playing. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> and I'm just going to play it over and over again. <laughs> yeah, some. <laughs> As someone who used to teach at like kindergartens in a primary school, I fucking love that song. <laughs> I am curious to see how much of that can be played before being copywritten. That's one of those songs that like your your channel gets taken down immediately. <laughs> I'm gonna play that, but then I'm gonna say like drugs the best drugs just over and over again. Do 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 do. And then, do 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 do. Charles, the best. I like yep. it. Make me a per- make me a performance <laughs> check. Um. So nat twenty. So twenty nine. Okay. Okay. So as you play this, and again, she said she wants you to attract customers. <laughs> so I'm gonna imagine you sort of walking outside by the front door, doing it, like beckoning people, and we'll come back to you later with your nat twenty. <laughs> and we'll see how full the bar is <laughs> by the time the others arrive. <laughs> that was a religious experience. Yeah, <laughs> people, people bowing down in front of you. <laughs> You're changing lives one note at a time. Realistically, with how much that infects people's minds, you are becoming the Beatles of Talcerum right now. <laughs> trog, Trog, and the other guys. Trog and the other guys. We're gonna trog get Poon adjacent. <laughs> You guys are already the groupies. Is there anything anyone else wanted to do before you guys all meet up back at the end? Uh, knickknack store. Uh, knickknack store. Uh, did we do? Did we figure out potions, or are we saving that for later? I think Kid has some clear potions that he's looking for. So why don't we meet up at the bar, go get some potions, and uh, head to Schleen. Well, that sounds good, Archie. Uh, sorry, my accent dropped for a second. Right. Yeah, me too. I uh, had a cock in me throat. I mean, frog. I mean, that's a little bit weird now. Can we say that anymore? Yeah. Can. Can I have a frog in <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if we can hand wave just that we pick up a couple potions. TJ has been sitting here so patiently. Yeah. <laughs> to I watch know. us just fuck around. <laughs> fuck around, <laughs> you know, I know. <laughs> shopping episodes can turn into five hours. You don't understand, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a, few, a few hours later, as you're all converging back um, to the Lounging Goblin, you can, you can hear down the street quite loud the sound of bagpipes wafting through the air. You know, louder and louder as you get closer. And in fact, it's it's quite a struggle. You think you might be at the wrong place because you can't even see the inn for the crowd of people that have surrounded the door. 
Oh my god. As there's, there's a line coming out around the block <laughs> down the street. And as you sort of force your way through the crowd and push your way through, you see Trog standing on a bar stool, whipping out the bagpipes. As we're walking through, through, I'm just fucking. I would like to try to pickpocket some motherfuckers. <laughs> I, I would like to assist if I can. That like, if someone looks like they're about to notice, I want to bump into them like rudely from the other side, like as I'm pushing my way through the crowd to like draw their attention. To be fair, I was gonna give you advantage anyway because they're all paying attention to Trogs. <laughs> okay, we're okay. Look, it was only a only a perception to see if you to see what class of person you can scope out of the crowd. Okay, dope. It's a seventeen. Seventeen. It says you're looking to the crowd. It it does seem Trogs managed to attract all kinds of people. Uh, young, old, rich, poor. Um, in particular, you see a middle aged half elven woman in a very very well made dress, pearl necklace around her neck, who looks like she would be um, good target. I'm gonna make my move, and by make my move, I mean I'm basically gonna try to disappear in the crowd. So, do you want to stealth? So the, well, for pickpocket, yeah, sign a hand. 22. So you can flip your hand. There's a woven pocket on the dress you can sort of slip your hand into. Um, pull out a small coin purse, as well as a red garnet ring, silver ring with a red garnet on top. You know that's going on, I think. You're not, you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to close your hands after a while, you know? <laughs> Well, I that's a different hand. I don't have any I don't have any trip on this hand. Ring on each finger, nothing on this one. Uh the coin is you do end up finding in the coin pouch is seventeen gold pieces. Okay. Word. I don't know about y'all, but that those bagpipes sound mighty familiar. Right, yeah. Figured we old well, I I I'm not standing anywhere near them at this point. I'm still Dipping through the uh, crowd, yeah. making my way in. I, did, I say it. I say it to Mooney, I guess, and then we're just heading towards the music, pushing our way through. Yeah, with how big Mooney is, um, the crowd kind of parts before him as he sort of pushes his way through. And kid, you can follow behind. Uh, just in love with the music now. Uh, just rushing towards the bar. Not sure if it is Trog or not, but hoping. Yeah. So as you guys manage to push your way through, you get some kind of dirty looks. You know, people have been waiting there for a while, trying to get in. You push your way through the doors, bar stool, <laughs> just just rocking out. The bartender is sort of frantic behind the bar, trying to fill all these orders that are coming her way. Um, several of the taps now have like signs on them saying that they're, they're empty. <laughs> Ooh. It's pretty. It's pretty crowded. It's hard to move through the through the tavern now. I'm gonna force my way to the bar and get the bartender's attention and see if she needs help and ask for permission to jump to the other side and help her tend. She's sort of just like, who are you? Oh, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> Come on. I'm to draw. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll jump over and I don't know any, I mean, I, I know plenty about drinks, so uh, maybe I could do a little bit, but just helping out. Yeah, at this point, you're just handing people any random drink. It's quite frantic behind the bar. You're not really concerned with who's getting what. As You know, people are just slapping coins down on the table and you're throwing flagons of beer <laughs> their way. The whole thing is a really nice distraction from where we're heading and why. If I can see Trog. Yeah, I mean, you're like a good two feet taller than most of the people in there. So you could see him as soon as you walked in the door. I'm just starting my dancing again, like from <laughs> from the beginning. Start a mosh pit. So, yeah, so as you're dancing, you're, you're, you're knocking people down and like out of the way as you're sort of just boogieing forward. <laughs> it's not it's not um, it's not delicate dancing. I'm not causing a mosh pit. <laughs> But I can feel the uneasiness and there's punching people left and right. <laughs> I'm going harder than I usually do. Trog, you can see this happening as well. You, I mean, again, Mooney being so tall, you see him kind of as a door and you see him just sort of rampaging his way towards the bar, like knocking down women and children. <laughs> Spe- specifically, <laughs> um, it's weird. You only knock down women and chips. Hey, that's my guy. And then I just keep going. <laughs> we'll just do that into the night, then. I guess maybe with Archie continuing to pick pockets. It lasts quite a long time. Eventually, um, the, the the bar does run out of beer, 
And at that point, I mean, a lot of people are already kind of drunk and passed out, uh, laying all over the bar. But as it gets later and later into the night, there's no alcohol. People slowly start to trickle out. And so there's still a, there's still a fairly sizable. There's more there now than when you had first come in Frog. Uh, but by now, a lot of the crowd has kind of dispersed. And the, the bartender sort of slumped against the uh, slumped against the bar, wiping away all the sweat. And, you know, she's kind of filthy and gross now. Still on the bar stool, I want to dismount and do a front flip and then land uh, <laughs> land there just as a final. Give me an acrobatics. Know. Okay. <laughs> do, do a bow. Please not one. Just fucking if you're, if you're, <laughs> head her into the floor. Go from that. Yeah. I got a 15. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, you can backflip and land. Okay. So, uh, sorry, I didn't catch your name earlier. She's panting. Breathe, like, breathing really heavily. Uh, Kyra. You can call me Kyra. Kyra. All right. Well, um, it seems like, uh, I did my job here. You, uh, Probably that's like the busiest you've ever been in, in your whole entire life. So um, I know you talked about you know splitting the profits a little bit. I know you're a little bit exhausted right now. We don't got to work out the details, you know, right this second. But uh, you know, I think uh, I think that deserved a little bit of a, a little kickback my way, if you know what I mean. But by the way, these are my these are my friends. Um, this is uh, the kid. Uh, this is uh, the Mooney. And uh, this is Archie. We're with the Lord's Alliance, and uh, you know we're here to kick ass and take names. That's, it's very nice to meet you all. I think, uh, come, just come talk to me. Right. Is there a room that we can uh, take for the evening? So, so just vaguely gesture over to the wall where there's some keys hanging up. Just, just, just take them. <laughs> all right, we'll grab those. Get a nice rest. The rooms are fairly standard, um, comfortable. Yeah. Uh, not particularly, lug- particularly, excuse me, luxurious. But you know, they do the job. I'm gonna go into my vessel, so I'm not actually gonna need my own room. I'll just go in one of someone else's. And uh, when I'm in the vessel, I'm just gonna uh, say, "I'm working on it. Just give me time. My next time through Fondalin, you'll you'll have what you're asking for." No response. That he you into your into your lamp. Uh, Trog, presumably you're going into the cooking pot. At this point, for anyone who's still downstairs, the, the bartender has, has fallen asleep like on the bar. She hasn't even moved. Moody's gonna do his his usual go to, especially when first checking out a city and sleep outside on a hill or something. <laughs> Probably next to all the other drunk people. Yeah, I mean there's not really there's not really a hill. Find there's, an alley. there's like an alley. There's an alley next to the bar, yeah. A dirty alley that he just... Yeah, dirty, kind of gross dirty. There are some other drunk people who have staggered out of the bar who have kind of... Just uh, full of piss. Just sort of collapsed. Piss. Yeah. It, it's true. It does not smell good. Mm-hmm. It's it's pretty unpleasant. Um, And as you fall asleep, I would like you to give me a wisdom check. Wisdom is a... Oh, what was that? 18. You You fall asleep. You don't sleep well. You you can't shake the strange feeling that you're being watched. Hmm. But you just you do get the benefits of the rest. But you just you just it's just a strange feeling you have. Okay. Yeah, I'll wait till everyone's outside, or if we meet back in the bar again. Okay, if everyone's just uh, resting as normal, sun comes up. Make your way back down into the bar if you would like. Frog, I think we should get whatever money is coming to you, and then just. And just take off. I'm I'm kind of antsy. I have a uh, package that I need to go pick up. So does Mooney. Uh, Trog, I guess we'll just meet you up here. We'll wait. Uh, keep an eye on the horses. Sounds uh, sounds like a plan. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow them over. The bartender you see is still uh, sleeping at the front of the bar as you guys make your way downstairs and out the front door. Um, going back to the Golden Anvil, you walk in. You see. Uh, Dame Apprentice, who doesn't seem to be doing anything really aside from just sweeping the floor all the time. And as you walk in, the walk in the uh, the older dwarf uh, sort of perks up. Oh, lads, I was hoping you'd be back. Finished up all your stuff. He will hand you the pairing dagger, which now, with the three garnets, you see 
one on the front of the hilt, and then there's one on each of the the wings that are used for pairing. Oh, mate, this is perfect. Uh, for Mooney, he'll gesture to the same model as before, and now you see that the leather armor is dyed um, a kind of reddish brown. Uh, I grunt, uh, nod my head down. In the morning, uh, I walked inside, but I only said hello. You can tell my eyes are darker today, and I'll grab the armor. So all said and done, Rapier's going to bring you up to about, or sorry, the Parian Dagger's going to bring you up to about 35 gold. Your armor there, with the dying and all, we're going to say around 47. That is as much as I have. <laughs> do, uh, do you have splint armor, by chance? Well, I should do in the back. Hey, let me go check. And again, you hear him go in the back and rummage around, pulling stuff and moving stuff around. He comes with a set of split armor. Um, this one is actually fairly normal relative to the gaudiness of the um, the other items in the shop. I'm sorry, but I haven't like I haven't quite gotten around to uh, finishing this one up yet. It doesn't have quite the shine I'd like it to have. Well, that's, that's all right. Does it? Would it do the the trick that it needs to? It's perfectly functional. It's just just doesn't, know, doesn't, just doesn't have the right pizzazz. Exactly. He gets me. That's yeah. That's uh, as long as it gets the job done. I mean, the kind of work that we're involved in, the clothes that we have, don't stay good for long. So, uh, what what was something like I that? Have like a bit, a bit, yeah. Full set of splint armor is going to bring you up to uh, two twenty five. All right, I can definitely pay that. Hey, uh, the chainmail armor that I have currently, is this something that you would maybe be interested in? I'm not going to have need of it after I switch out. There's not a huge market for used armor, but I could melt it down for scrap. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll knock off 25 right. gold in exchange. Make it even 200. Do we still have the armor that we found from the uh, dungeon? That's what I was going to ask Max, if we could hand that over as well. Which are which armor would that be? I know you found a set of magic armor. The breastplate with the gold dragon motif. You you identified that. That gives you like a plus one to your AC, and I think gives you advantage against dragon breath attacks. Oh yeah, let's not give that away then. All right. Yeah, we can hold on to that. But yeah, I'll I'll, I'll take that splint that splint armor then. Thank you. Pleasure doing business with you. No problem. Uh, I was wondering as well. Do you have a? Do you sell any dusters or like a long, long coats or anything I could wear over this? Sorry, that's a bit outside my expertise. I mean, there's there's tailors around. You could ask. That's right. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask someone in in Schleen maybe. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, and if that's everything you guys want to do, you can head back to the inn if you'd like. Meet back up. All right, you guys go back to the inn. At this point, the uh, bartender has uh, roused, kind of groggy. Dark bags under her eyes, chatting up with Trog a bit. So, uh, here, uh, I gotta, I gotta ask now that you're awake. Um, what's, uh, what's the cut of the profit here? What's, uh, what's the cheese? What's the cheddar we're talking about? Well, I'd say, um, I've never seen so many people in my life. I'd say fifty percent seems more than fair. Sounds, uh, sounds good to me. So, uh, what's, uh, what's that figure? She will drop a sack of a hundred and ten gold on the table. To about say it's a it's a pleasure doing business with you. Yeah? Um, if we ever make our way back through, uh, be more than happy to put on another performance. No, <laughs> I'd be happy for that as well. Hitting the road, heading to Schleen. In the road. All right, it's gonna take you. Let me take a look at the map. From Bordon, it's probably gonna take you. Oh shit, I don't have the map here. A day and a half, yeah. About a day and a half to get there. If you really, like, force yourselves, you could get there in one day. Um, if we're getting there by night, I- I'm fine with that. I mean, I, uh, I was kind of hold- pushing it off, you know, getting there, just because I was worried about what I might find. But I think we've already encountered the worst-case scenario with the whole Valk thing. It's probably best to-, to move along. Yeah, so getting out early, you can get there probably around 9 or 10 p.m.-ish. You do notice, um, as you're going to Schleem, there is a noticeable, again, a noticeable military presence. Lots of local soldiers marching around and doing, you know, military things. 
Um, as you get closer to Shalim, Shalim, you can tell, is a much bigger city. You might know a bit about the history of Shalim. You know it's a very, very old city that has changed hands, different various kingdoms <laughs> throughout the uh, centuries. Um, currently, the king of Shalim and the king of Bredon is a guy named Robert, King Robert. Reaching the gates, I'm assuming there's, you said, more of a guard presence, uh, more of like an army presence. So there's guards probably stationed at the entrance as well. Yeah, well, the gates are closed, being that it's quite late at night. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, we're we're going to approach with our badges out. We're members of the Lord's Alliance, looking to gain entry into the city. Uh, the guard will... And this guy looks kind of battle-hardened, right? He's been around. He's seen some shit. So he'll look at the... Uh, the badges quite closely and sort of just grunt and he'll open the door at the bottom. Thank you. Yeah, we've taken our fair share of hits too. We just came out the other side a bit more intact. I feel that, brother. 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 He's, he's oh, talking, yeah, he, talks, brother. he talks like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> you recommend any uh, reputable places for us to stay tonight? <laughs> I can't do a Hulk Hogan voice anymore. <laughs> Well, brother. <laughs> well, brother. His partner. His his partner him. Up. Hell yeah, brother. You can sleep on these packs. Hell yeah, <laughs> when I need a place to stay, I go to the priest and the princess. Oh. That sounds right. fancy. How, uh, how close is that to the library in town? Not close at all. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Just uh, uh, it might be a bit hard to uh, just so I don't have to explain this later. I did put the map of Shalim in the Discord. On the the left, underneath the castle, which is like that big building on the hill that looks a bit fancy. Um, the library is that big greenish building with like a circle and the rectangle part. Any news that you've heard from the library? Is everything here uh, good in the city? Well, brother, I can't read. So I never go there. <laughs> Don't worry, my guy. One day. I appreciate that, frog brother. Oh, my God, that fucking got me. <laughs> I guess we're heading to the... Uh, to the priest and princess, then. Okay, so heading towards the priest and princess. It is quite late, so there's not many people out and about. But as you get to where the guard pointing you towards, the priest and the princess, you see it's, for having a, a kind of a nice name, it actually looks like a complete shithole. Um, <laughs> it's this huge, shabby, like, pub made out of what appears to just be straw and mud. Um, next to it is a small temple, which you might be able to imagine is what it's named for, uh, being close to that, that church. Um, <clears throat> you go inside, it's surprisingly huge. It doesn't look that big from the outside, but you go in and it's huge, but it's like fucking putrid. It's pretty gross. There's lots of large straw tables. Dangerously enough, even though it's made out of straw, there's like torches everywhere. There's like a hundred fucking hotels and places to stay in this place, and this guy gave us the fucking Morton Murder Hotel. <laughs> I mean, did that guy seem like the kind of person who stays in the nice places? <laughs> There's a surprising amount of people inside. Right. Even though it's late, it's, uh, it, you know, they're, they're, it's quite busy. You see the barmaid running back and forth between the customers. Uh, she's trying to keep on top of the orders. I guess we're going up to the counter. Behind the counter, there's a, a, a fairly short guy, maybe about five feet tall. Very thin, very spindly. <clears throat> Who's also helping, trying to help the barmaid keep up with the orders. When you come up and ask for a room, he sort of barely glances at you. <clears throat> says five silver, and then throws the keys at you. How many rooms do we want? At least two, right? Yeah, I'd say at least two. Do you, uh, my guy, do you got like a, a pot by chance that I could fill with some water? <laughs> he's, he's like so busy right now. He's like, yeah, just, just, just go in the kitchen. I'll throw one gold piece down and then run to the kitchen. This is not the place that looks like it should be serving food as you go back there. Oh. But do I find a pot? You do find a pot. It's disgusting. But it is a pot. Hey, uh, Moody, can you can you help me here quick? I'm going to fill it with water and 
Uh, can you t- take this up to our rooms for us? I, I can't. It's a little big for me. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, wait for him, for him to fill it. With the pot filled with water, there is a very... There, there's a noticeable layer of grease and fat that's floating on top of the water. Oh, soup. If you're hungry for later. <laughs> no, I'll run it up to the room. Uh, on Wait, on, on bed? Or floor? Yeah, you could just put it on the floor. You don't need to put it on a bed. That, that'll just take up too much room for the guys. And, you know, I, I want to be courteous to everyone, you know, so. And this water kind of, it's got like a little bit of an odor, so. Maybe like kind of put it near the window. We can kind of crack it a little bit. Let you know, let the let the stank out if you if you know what I mean. Mooney, I, I would I would recommend. I mean, this place is dirty enough, but I would definitely recommend probably staying inside tonight. We don't really know what to expect with the city and right, fellas. I'm not fucking staying here. You, you all can go fuck yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. There is no way. In fuck, that I'm giving these motherfuckers any money to sleep in a fucking shithole. You just watched me pay for two rooms. You waited until after I paid to tell, to say that you weren't staying in the room? I don't know why you fucking choose this shit place to stay. It's just on you, mate. It's, it's better than being out in the woods and some shit. I mean, you gotta admit. We're in fucking town. We're not in the goddamn woods. It'd be different if we're troops and along and fucking is a shithole along the side of the road. But mate, let's go fucking find somewhere nicer. Well, I, I mean, I'm staying in my vessel tonight out of the way, so I'll, I'll do whatever y'all well, want. Why don't you but... go fuck yourself? <laughs> or oh, I'm going to pay for room. You guys can sleep in the fucking murder den, and I'm going to sleep in the bougie-ass fucking bong, I guess, whatever we fucking call it. <laughs> to be fair... I was the one that paid for the room, and um, yeah, I mean, I got my pot. That's all I need. All right, Trump. You sold the pot, mate. There's a fucking... I'm pretty sure I saw a fucking fingernail floating in it. And it came out of the kitchen like that. Just standing here is making me itch. I'm not fucking laying in one of these beds. This is how you get I mean, fucking pubic wise. <laughs> we, we have stayed in worse places than this. Yeah. I mean, come on. We've stayed in worse places. We can find a better place tomorrow. We're already here. We've been on the road all day. I'm, I don't know about y'all, but I'm fucking tired. On a side note, you sound exactly like my wife when we had the discussion <laughs> in Nashville <laughs> when I found the fucking bullet hole in our hotel room door. <laughs> I mean, it has character, so This right? is a real... I'm, I'm, I'm RPing this from the heart. <laughs> she was the same thing too she's actually a genie so she disappears yeah. in her lamp at she, night she yeah. sleeps in her lamp <laughs> I mean I, I'm going in I'm going in my best all the way if y'all want to find somewhere else then I'm fine with it but I'm going to go up to the room how bad how bad do these beds look it isn't any worse than if I slept in a pond so I mean bed is bed is a generous way to put it it's kind of just a lump of straw <laughs> on the ground I'm just gonna. Sh- do I have a bedroll? I I have a bedroll. Yeah, but yeah, you have a bedroll. Yeah. I'm gonna just clear the the straw of whatever fucking garbage was on top of it. I'm gonna lay. My- I'm just shaking my head the entire time. Your hands are slightly sticky after you finish clearing the straw. I, that's the worst. I hate touching <laughs> things and being sticky when I'm done. Is this somehow worse than the barn we stayed at the other day? Oh, it's much worse. It, it feels worse. The farm, the farmer took care of his animals. <laughs> hey, Andrew, yeah. out of curiosity, your vessel is it like a teapot? Is it like what does it look like? It's a, it's like a lamp. Was it something that would hold the liquid? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that. That might be a DM question because I don't know if it can be opened by people other than me okay so i pick it up what is what am i is it just solid like oh this is a lamp that or like a a fucking thing that doesn't have any well i guess i know we never got into it is it just like your is it just your typical aladdin sort of a genie lamp or did you want it to be a slightly different than that yeah like it it has um like patterns on the outside it's not in gold it's like a almost like a clay 
kind of make um, that's been like uh, kiln dried or something, and it has like intricate patterns written, uh, you know, drawn all over it. But it's vaguely in the same kind of shape as like the Aladdin, the Aladdin style lamp. Maybe a little bit taller than wide, but it has a lid on the top that I'm usually able to open. Uh, but uh, like I'm, I'm presumably the only one who can open it because I'm the only one who has a connection to it. Yeah, I would say you, you. I would say you pick up the lamp and try and open the lid, but you can't seem to get it open. What if I look down the sp- the spout? But, but also, <laughs> but also, I'm, I'm. It's in my pack right now. Uh, fuck you! You're in oh. your lamp. You said you're in your lamp. Go fuck yourself. You can't <laughs> you. You can't, <laughs> yeah, I'm you going out of this one. Go fuck yourself. You already said you went your vessel. For the sake of it, I am. I am in the lamp. That's fine. I guess I mean, we all know where this is going. I'm, I'm gonna try to piss yeah, in the just, hole. Just do it. Roll me. Just get. Just do Roll it. Come on. Just get over yeah, it. Give me, an, give me an arcana. Give me an arcana. Yeah. An arcana. <laughs> it's a magic lamp. Give me an arcana. It's a magic piss. <laughs> it's just really humid. It's like uh, it's usually a dry heat. It's like a humid, wet kind of heat. Now. <laughs> oh, hey oh, Thank God I'm a halfling. Hey oh, dirty twenty. I feel like at this point I need to apologize to TJ the way I apologize to Radoff. Like, I'm sorry, this just happens like every game. <laughs> no, man, I'm getting a kick out of it. <laughs> you good? Archie, you don't know if it's working. The piss <laughs> does go in the spout. That's all I need to know. Uh, kid, as you said, it does feel slightly more damp than you're used to. You can't tell why. No smell. Like a morning dew. There's a slight smell. <laughs> yeah, well, it's usually there's like a uh, scent of heavy incense in here anyway, so I don't know how much of that. Actually, the, the in- over the incense, you probably wouldn't be able to smell it, but it is kind of damp. Yeah. I was going to say, it's super canon that halfling piss smells exactly like Mountain Dew. I'll keep that in mind for next time you piss on something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I'm, I guess I'm going to rest slightly uneasier than usual. <laughs> yes, slightly uneasier than usual. <laughs> Okay, so everyone's resting. Uh, Mooney, you give me another wisdom check. Mm, I don't like this. What is what the fuck is going on with Mooney? I don't know. Oh, I I might be mistaken. Uh, I'm pretty sure Mooney's. Is someone else carrying something important? Oh nope, you're right. Yep, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> okay, just it is wrapped up, but yes, you're you're right. Oh, Mooney has. You have the bag of holding. It's not in the bag of holding. What the fuck? We took it out of the bag. What, what the it was fuck? never in the bag. No, oh my God, uh, Archie was, was holding it, and he was staring too deep into it, so I had to take it with a bedroll. And you wrapped it up. Oh my God, we're so fucking stupid. Then Gandalf. Oh my God. That's a 21. 21. It's the same sort of feeling. You do get the benefit of the rest. Like You just wake up feeling really uneasy. You're kind of in a... It puts you in a bit of a bad mood. A bit more negative than maybe you would be otherwise. Uh, yeah. We, uh, w- once we wake up, uh, not even hellos. I'll do like a nod. Again, my eyes just eye crusties, red and everything. As I as I notice the eye crusties, I'm gonna walk up to Mooney. Oh, mate, you didn't use the pillow, did you? <laughs> no, I sat here. <laughs> Fuck, mate. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Do we want to head over to the library then right away and get that taken care of? Right. I think that would probably uh, be a best idea. Well, on our way out, I'm I'm just gonna slide the keys out to the bartender. We will not be back. The plot was great. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was in my vessel last night, and I usually like the outside does not bother me at all, but this place apparently is just so gross that I could still feel nasty inside of that thing. Like it just, it just, it clung to me overnight. And you're just going to see Archie smiling. <laughs> <laughs> the only smile Archie's had since he's walked into this establishment. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right, we're going to head over to the library then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you guys walk over to the library. <laughs> um, the library is quite well known around the world. It's got it's got sort of like the Library of Alexandria vibe. People who are doing like serious research, there's they go there. 
there's lots of old ancient sort of books and tomes, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you, you know where I'm going. And the, the building itself looks quite ancient as well. Um, it's this large black granite building um, with the the circular part in the back that has a dome on it and, you know, it's green on the map, but it's supposed to be black. And as you walk inside, um, you see just an absolute maze of sprawling shelves. It's very, very cramped. And unless you know what you're looking for, it'd be very hard. You get the sense to find any sort of specific book or, you know, author. Um, but even as cramped as it is, it, it's quite, quite well lit. Um, there's these magic orbs that are floating in the air, um, giving, giving, even though, like I said, it's, it's quite cramped and labyrinthian, um, but brightly lit. And you do notice it has several floors. You do see stairs um, on either side going up and, you know, up and down, as stairs do. Can y'all imagine what it would be like if this place caught on fire? I could imagine that. I don't think you should do that. Well, yeah, um, kid, if you fucking light this place on fire, I promise you, we're not going to be friends anymore, I don't think. People would be so mad. Oh, bro, they'd be fucking pissed. <laughs> they'd be fired up. I, I would, <laughs> fuck you, mate. <laughs> fuck you. Oh, by the way, can you guys give me, since you guys leveled up, can you give me all your new perception scores? Uh, I'm a tw- 12. It's 11. 13 for me. Mine's 15. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you guys are in the library now. You do see there's people, um, as you sort of wander, you wander through the, the, the bookshelves and stuff. There's, um, there are people there reading um, or searching for books. There, you do have to find death as you wander your way through sort of in the center um, of, the, of the domed area. Is there a bell? Yeah, there's actually a tiny little silver bell. That you can... so hearing the bell, it takes um, it takes a, a, a minute or two, but eventually, this uh, this young human guy, maybe about fifteen years old, short brown hair, sort of appears beside you guys. Um, he looks quite nervous. He's got sort of just like a nervous personality, really. Maybe not quite confident in himself. Um, can can I help you? I'm gonna pull out the Lord's Alliance badge. We have some business with uh, Jeebus. Is he here? Oh, um, sh- sure. He's maybe a little bit busy, but... Well, if, if you can get him for us quick, this is a uh, uh, security issue that we need to... Right, of the utmost importance. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, please, please just come this way. And he'll sort of beckon you. And you guys can follow. What's your name, by the way? Oh me, my my name's uh Wickinson. Wickinson Farnham. Wickinson. Thank you. Wickinson. And uh what's your date of birth? I'm gonna pull out my paper and like <laughs> <laughs> Um he eventually leads you to the Well you go up some stairs, you go up to like the third floor and he leads you kind of to the back where there's some uh closed doors. And he'll he'll knock on the door, and sort of you know nervously stutter. Uh, sir, there's some some people here to see you. And after there's no answer, he sort of knocks on it again. And eventually, after like five minutes of him nervously just knocking on the door, oh. he'll sort of open it and peek in, and pull it open. <clears throat> and you guys look into this room and you see this what appears to be incredibly ancient gnome like probably the oldest thing you've ever seen in your lives um surrounded by books head first on the table gently snoring oh thank god i thought he was dead (laughs) 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 you made it all the way here you guys have fucked around too long and he died (laughs) god you should have just gotten there a week earlier sorry Uh, so look at them go over he'll sort of Gently tap me on the shoulder and be like, sir? <laughs> and he'll sort of jolt up with a start. Um, he's got very wispy white hair. Uh, these half-moon spectacles. He'll, he'll groggily look around at you. I'm going to hold up again the Lord, Lord's Alliance. Do you mind if we speak in private for a couple minutes? It's important. 
Oh, um, okay, sure. I'm, I'm just going to stare at the guy who let us up and wait for him to leave. He's just, like, nervously looking back and forth. He almost, like, <laughs> doesn't quite get the hint. You can close the door on the way out. He's very socially awkward. Oh, um, oh, yes, okay, thank you. Just <laughs> walk out and close the door. Uh, is it, it was Samuel, right? Is that the guy who we had spoken to in the beginning who told us about him? Yes. Samuel had uh, told you that about Jesus, yes. Samuel sent us from, was, was that Aspicus? Um, that would have been, that would have been Aspicus, yeah. Yeah, we've come a long way to come and speak to you. Samuel, he's sort of scratching his head and looking up. You, you might have to jog my memory a little bit. It's not easy being over 500 years old, you know? That's all right. That that part of it isn't isn't too important. Uh, the big thing that I want to test your mind with is uh, why we came here. Do you mind if we have a seat? Yes, please. Yeah, there's that sort of it's like a meeting room almost. Um, so there's like a round table with chairs around it. I'm looking for someone, someone very dear to me, and I've come a very long way over a very long period of time to find this person. Does the name Valkithra mean anything to you? Valkithra, I can't say it does. He's a half-elf like me. Samuel had said that he fell in with the wrong group. Uh, we ourselves have encountered this group just a couple days ago. I don't know if you know anything about a group that might worship someone they call He Who Waits. He appears to get... You get the sense that he's a bit scatterbrained, given his age. Uh, but when he hears that, he he sort of... Super perceptible, but he appears to maybe perk up a little bit, get a bit more serious. <laughs> Say, where did you hear that name? Well, uh, it's a bit of a long story. We had encountered a cult on the way here. They wore masks like this one, and I'm going to pull out the one that Valk had been wearing and set it on the desk. Does this look familiar? Somewhat familiar. Where did you... Where did you encounter these cultists? In a mine, just outside of Fondling. Hmm. They were doing something, but we can maybe get to that later. I have a feeling that maybe you know a little bit more than what you're sharing so far. As as far as your acquaintance goes, unfortunately, I, I can't say that I know him. That's all right. Just the group. If we had a name or a, a place. I don't know if I can give you a name either. You said they were doing... What were they doing? You said they were doing things. They, they were. Uh, before I get to that, the leader of them went by the name of the Black Spider. He was an elf. Does that not mean anything to you either? No, I've not heard that name before. Like intentionally not sharing anything? Yeah, give me an insight. That sucks. That's a 10. Uh, it's telling the truth as far as you can tell. Well, uh, they were doing something uh, with an orb. And I'm just going to nod. I'm just going to look back at the group. I don't really know who has this or what happened to the orb after everything. Because I was kind of focused on the mask and, you know, waking up after I got knocked out. Uh, Archie's just going to kind of be staring off into the distance once the orb is mentioned. Gonna first take off one of my rings, kind of fiddle with it in my fingers, put it back on, and then I'm gonna just gonna pipe up and be like, "That orb contains every dark thing that you've ever known, and every dark thing that you are too scared to know," and then fall silent again. This entire time, Mooney is staring at a satchel and will walk up, uh, open it up, uh, saying nothing, eyes just crusty, and looking straight down into it. Uh, I mean, I'd imagine it's probably 
widening the width of the satchel with how big it is. So, I don't imagine if you stare inside, you can see it. Um, it's actually not as big. It's it's about the size of a grape a grapefruit, I would say. It's not like it's not like a massive crystal ball or anything. Easily can fit in your hand. Uh, I, I have it. I have it here. Uh, I didn't forget that I I grabbed it. Uh, it's inside of a uh, bedroll now. If I'll I'll just take off my satchel and leave it on the table. You shouldn't touch it. I don't think. It was floating when we had seen it, and they were worshipping it or trying to do something with it when we got there. He'll sort of warily peer into the satchel and sort of almost like a sharp intake of breath, like a small gasp and jerk back a bit. <laughs> and say, where, where did you say you found this again? Outside of Fondland. Not terribly far from here in the grand scheme of things. But it came with papers also. Um, I'm going to pull those out because I, I had them in my journal um, and point out where they, there was like the different markings, right? Some of them were crossed out. I don't know what this means. We were hoping maybe you could tell us. He'll, he'll examine the papers for, for a minute or two um, before suddenly standing up. I hope you could... Come with me for a second. And where is it we're going? Just downstairs. I'm going to grab the satchel and hand it back to Mooney. And, uh, I mean, we've, we've trusted him this far, for better or for worse. Uh, almost hesitant to take it back. Give it a couple seconds, so I'll take it, put it over my neck again. Uh, okay. I'll follow him out. Very slowly, he has a walking stick. Very slowly, start making his way down the stairs. Um, so you go down the second floor. You go down to the first floor. He leads you to the back, where there is another set of stairs that goes down very deep. And as you, well, as as you guys are going down, he um, he finds Wickinson again and asks him, um, "Could you please?" Find Tillin and tell him to meet us downstairs before going down this very long staircase uh, deep into the basement, it seems, of the uh, library. Um, it's much less brightly lit down here. Um, and in fact, even to get down there, you have to, he has this large iron key around his neck that he uses to unlock the door to get downstairs. And as you get down in the basement, you notice it's still kind of a labyrinth. Uh, bookshelves and books, but these books seem a lot, a lot older, uh, much more ancient, um, written in strange languages that you don't really comprehend. And just, as, just as you guys are going down, going down the stairs. Um, actually, with all of your passive perceptions, behind you, <laughs> doing his best not to be seen. It seems. <laughs> You do see, uh, it, it seems like someone's following you a bit. He's got sort of black armor on, sword on his back. Well, we all see this? Yeah. As he's, as he's being sort of sneakily trying to follow you, um, he does accidentally knock over a stack of books. I'm going to, uh, Archie's on it. I've, I've broken away from the group. Stealth, I would like to break away from the group. Stealth loop around and now be behind homeboy who thinks he's so, so stealthy. Uh, roll me a stealth check. So, uh, 19. So you guys see Archie <clears throat> slip off um, away from the group. It's not very hard to hide in this maze of books, especially when most of the book stacks and shelves are taller than Archie himself. And you are able to get behind him uh, seemingly unnoticed. The rest of us, we hear it, but we, we know that he's off doing his thing, so we're going to walk as if like we didn't even we didn't even register that it happened. Yeah, as I left, I tapped a uh, kid on the... Uh, it was supposed to be the back, but it, it turned out short. It's the ass. I give him the little ass kind of as I disappear. Yeah, we've, we've done this play before, so... Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the Scatterbrain special. 
So actually, this all happens uh, mostly before you guys go into the locked door, by the way. So you notice all this as Jeebus is unlocking that big, heavy iron lock that leads down to the basement. The rest of us are just continuing on, so this is all Archie and whatever. All right, um, so can I get a uh, description of Homeboy? Who am I stalking? Well, T- TJ, I'll let you describe yourself for, for everybody. So you kind of see, like, it's, it's a mass of black, a big black cloak over a helm. If you can see the face, it's kind of like a skeletal-looking helm. It's like strips of plate, and then it's got like three slits in it with two uh, two holes at the top. Uh, he's got bracers on each arm. Uh, it looks like run-down plate armor. It looks like it was well cared for at once, but it's definitely not now. It's got like some rust on it. There's some uh, some new etchings on it. So there's infernal on his left bracer. There's celestial on his right. Uh, you see on the back, you see a angel wing on one side. You see a devil wing on the other. And then like on the on the front, you see like another depiction of duality. You got like a face, uh, like an angelic face and a demonic face. On it, if you can see it. And then again, he's got like plate mail style uh, greaves and then like his plate mail itself is just like a couple strips of of sheet metal it looks like put together but again it's definitely seen better days uh dark iron with rust flex you can't see anything of of his skin or anything like that. giant sword on the back i would say three and a half feet to four feet long and it's a giant black blade in light you can kind of see some like runes carved into it Almost looks like runes are, are of blood. I would like to try to get as close to this individual as I can. And when I feel I'm I'm uh, very well, you know, I've, I've got definitely got the drop on homie. Because like you said, it's it's a labyrinth. He has a three foot long sword. He's he's not drawing that sword on me, and then let alone getting a good swing. So I'm I'm in tight. Um, all right, mate. Ah, you want to explain why you're following me? I just turn slowly. I look down on him, and my eyes light up red. That's a strange artifact you have on you. I don't know what you're talking about, mate. If, if, if you're referring to this beautiful necklace, <clears throat> you're, you're absolutely correct. But uh, <clears throat> other than that, you can pretty much piss off. The rest of you can hear, you, the, rest of you can hear the conversation at this point as well. I turn my head and I ignore him, and I continue walking towards the group. Roy, mate, maybe you didn't fucking understand me. You can go, or you'll never walk again. This is your two options. I've drawn my, uh, my rapier. Yeah, the rest of us turned around. Are you one of them? Who? I'm gonna pull out the mask again. Uh, does it look similar to the helm that he has? Uh, no. No. I'm just going to hold that up. One of these. I know no one that wears a mask like that. But I am curious about that artifact that you carry. I've seen it before. I know it's not good for anybody. Well, we're, we're trying not to get in the habit of having many people know about what we might be carrying. Who are you? Yeah, what's your name? What's your sign? Call me Angel. Angel? I come from a land far away. I'm a blood hunter by profession. My job to hunt down the dark things of this world and slay them. I said in my travels, crossed evil like this before. Ran into this very fact that you now carry. I'm curious. I, I knew the one that had it last. How do you possess it now? Can I do an insight check? Is this guy bullshitting us? Yeah, good. <laughs> that is a seven. I do not have very, very high insight. Yes, can't tell. How can we be sure that you're on our side with this and not a part of whatever this is? I mean, why why sneak up on us? Why not just come out and... Right, and also, how the fuck do you know what I have what any of us have, or 
in theory. Of no one is admitted to having anything. I look at the I look at the half lean and I go, Have you touched it? Right, do you wanna to touch it? <laughs> That'll be five gold. Mate. It's ten if you want me to touch it. Fifteen if you want to watch me touch him. And I'm gonna point at Mooney. But I completely ignore it. I go darkness in that orb is something that one doesn't simply forget. Uh Mooney is seems to be getting even angrier. Uh placing right hand on satchel but also pulling out the mask with his left hand and going to slowly start to put it on if you can avoid uh angel yeah you know you see um you see this big hairy monster putting on a pair of women's underpants over his face <laughs> okay and nothing happens <laughs> and nothing happened. That, that's it. Nothing else happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what he happens just, when we he just him. looks. He's breathing heavily and looks angry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the time for that. You, you got to save that. Um, you don't, you don't want to scare this guy. But hey, my guy. You know, I feel. I don't know if I can speak for everyone, but I like to. You know, I like to look in people's eyes, look in the face. See, you, you know what. Uh, you know, what the some facial expressions, so maybe we might be willing to talk to you a little bit more if you take that, that creepy little skull like uh helmet off there. Might be uh I'd like to see your pearly whites if you know what I mean. I drop my eyes from the red back to normal and I say like very seriously Only those that know death have seen my face. Right, mate. <laughs> We get our asses handed to us a lot. It hurt really bad, but I haven't been close to death. But some of these other guys, they've been, you know, you've been close. I mean, I remember the one time we had to, we had to, you know, peel Mooney off the floor. I thought he was going to die, but we uh, we gave him a little potion, and he was coming back to life. But right, we also know death because we fucking sent him a couple motherfuckers there too. I'd like to point that out. Jeeves, do you know who this is? I would just shake his head no. Um, I think we don't have much time for this. And Ho sort of looked directly at Angel. If if this involves you, you should come with us. And he'll look at everyone and say, "We probably need all the help we can get." If that's what the group decides, if 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 y'all are okay with it, then I'm I'm okay with it. But I want, we need to know more about you when we're finished here. Agreed. I've been. I'm from a land far away too, so maybe we're in like the same land. Uh, do you know the name of that place? You have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> As are most of the other people. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say I've seen many frog people in my time. I did hear about a uh, a song and dance from Trog the Frog in Bordeaux on a couple nights hey. back. Yeah, that's, that's me. I'm trying to call. Nice to meet you. Um, hey, I got to say, you know, I love, I love talking with fans. If you got something you want me to sign, you know, I could sign your helmet. I'm going to get close and finally sign a piece of his armor. I'm, yeah, I'm, so, I'm so thankful to meet a fan. You know, you, you, you're just wonderful. You're great. You know, you, you're all right. You can, you can tag along. You can be, uh, you, can be uh, you know, one of the other groupies here with Frog and Friends. I look down, and I just I just shake my head, and then I just turn my attention away again. All right, Jeeves, let's let's get let's get to uh, to the details here. Now he leads all five of you down the stairs, real down into this darker labyrinth of books and indecipherable blah blah blah, et cetera, et cetera. Until so eventually you get to this 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 stone door, and all around the door you can see runes that are glowing, seemingly magic. And on either side of the door, there is a circle, an, o- an open circle with runes surrounding it that are moving, right? They sort of move in a clockwise direction. And as you guys get to the door, he sort of stops and turns around and looks at you. Well, actually, before he before he does that, as, as you guys are walking down again, you get to the door. You see this sort of flash of purple off to the side, um, and you notice what well, you would uh, you you've seen probably teleporting runes before. 
a flash of purple as someone teleports down to the basement. And you see a tall, sort of dark-skinned, bald man wearing blue robes uh, come stepping off of the, uh, the teleportation circle. And he'll, he'll look you guys sort of up and down, and then he'll look down at Jeeves and say, you know, what is the meaning of this? And Jeeves will look over at Mooney and say, show him. What? What? In your satchel. Show him what you have. Just don't touch it. Okay? Just let it let it roll out. GV, you can see me? <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> I, I think they have like a, a magic free zone or something in here to make sure that no one can spy on us or whatever. So that might be like eliminating the power of your mask. Well, that is true, actually. We do have that. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad to know. Uh, I'll take it off, throw it back in the satchel, and again, open it up to let them look inside. GV, you can see me. <laughs> <laughs> and this dark-skinned bald man will look at it and just, like, stare <laughs> and then sort of do a double-take back and forth between what's in the satchel and uh, Jeeves. Uh, what do you see there, Senior Spotless? He's not going to respond, but Jeeves is going to say, I think we should show them. And Jeeves will put one hand on one circle, and this bald man will put one hand on their circle. And the runes flash again as the stone doors open. Inside this mostly blank stone room, <clears throat> aside from just massive strings of magic runes um, that are just crisscrossing all over the place, all up and around this room, except for a, an empty circle in the middle where there is a stone pillar. And on top of this stone pillar, you see, much like what is inside Mooney's satchel, there, there is another black orb floating an inch or two off this stone pillar. Well... That's a lot how this one looked. Does that orb feel similar to me, to the one in the satchel? Um, you can't feel anything off this one at all. Okay. As you, well, you get the impression, as Jeeves has just mentioned, and you might not necessarily recognize the runes, but you get the sense that these runes are doing something to contain the orb. All right. So you've seen these before. Does that mean you know what they mean? or where they come from, or anything about those who might worship them? Or uh, Before that, Mooney, can you roll me another wisdom check? Actually, can uh, everyone roll me a wisdom check? Mine's a 20. Uh, dirty 20. 14. 21. 18. Big 5. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say how, how like, because that, that goes back to the one shot because Ian's care or uh, Derek's character was from Mario. Oh my god, and that was a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's the first time you heard me. <laughs> it, it now now it feels like like uh, opening to a Star Yo, Wars too. like show or movie. It's just slowly <laughs> creeping in. <Yeah. laughs> As the door opens and you guys look at this other orb that's sitting in that room. The runes that are all that are in this room flash for a second. Um, this, this bright white light, um, and very similar to um, what you guys felt when you fought uh, the black spider. You feel this pulse, and even even through these runes that are supposed to be containing this orb, um, you can feel a pulse coming out between the two of them, almost as if they're communicating in some way. Archie, you are going to take <laughs> three points of psychic damage as you sort of get just buffeted from both sides uh, by this 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 pulse of energy. Is it unsafe that we have these two together? Because it feels unsafe. I, until a moment ago, I didn't even know there were more than one. <clears throat> yeah, they'll both they'll, they'll both take their hands off the door, and the door will slowly close again. About. 112 years ago, if my memory's not failing, there was um, another 
incident. I, I don't know all the details, but another group, not dissimilar to yours, helped us out then. And they brought this back with them. <clears throat> and at that point, the um, the other guy will speak up, the bald guy in the robes. We spent a lot of time studying it, but I have no idea where it came from, what it does. Just knew it was bad news. We, we've done our best to seal it away. And never in my wildest dreams would I think there was more than one. Where did these adventurers find this orb? Uh, at this point, Jeebus will speak up. So Jeebus was actually there. It was also in the mountains, but much farther north than, than Phandalin. Is there anyone of this group who would be around today? And if so, would you know where we could find them? This is our, this is our wedding group. Yeah, but it was over 100 years ago. So I'm going to say... I was a half no. gnome orc. A half gnome orc. Yeah, <laughs> and a half work in the home. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let's not forget that the Ron was sleeping. The, the Ron, yeah, <laughs> literally the entire session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just curled up under a tree, and yeah, wow, it was it was the, it was a long time ago. I I don't know what what became of them. Were there any celestials or devils involved? I didn't say. They seem to be changed by the incident. Not as happy as I remember them when they returned. I, I quietly nod. Can you do for this orb what you did for that? Uh, we'll do our best. Not here. Um, Find another place for it. Don't keep two of them in the same place. Keep them in the same room because you've already got the fucking thing figured out. Don't listen to me. I'm not the best with the, this magic thing, but just a thought. <laughs> well, when we went into the same room, they were, it seemed like they were bouncing off of one another. All right, maybe their energy will fucking and destroy them, and then the world will be a better place. Or the building. Well, it's not my building. We need to get it out of here. I've seen these act as gateways before. This one in your satchel wasn't contained. It can open up doors. We need to get it out of here. Doors. Paul guy will sort of uh, reach for it and take it out of. Well, who sort of just grabbed the satchel from Mooney? Assuming you're willing to let it go. Oh uh, yeah, that's fine. Or if it's easier, I can just pull the bedroll out with the orb. Doesn't matter to me. Okay, he'll take the he'll take the bedroll with the orb wrapped inside. He's sort of <laughs> he's holding it kind of away from himself, very gingerly, taking great care not to unwrap it or you know leave any part of it exposed. Yeah, and and again, um, same as when I was taking it back, uh, before I give it over, similar to Archie, I'm just staring at it, and then I'll reach my arms out all the way. Can we roll an insight check on the bald guy? Yeah, go ahead. All right, TJ. I want to say first roll of the game, but I think you rolled one already and didn't do as well. Yeah, there's been a few. <laughs> 14. It seems like he's being truthful. Um, you can kind of tell by looking at Jeebus and uh, this guy that they're both they're both pretty shook up. Um, they don't really know what to make of the situation, but it seems as if they're being truthful with you. So what do we do next? Because we're hunting the people who are collecting these things or unlocking them or something and I, I have those papers again I'm going to present them to this mage I mean there's something there's something big happening um, again he'll sort of look at them and then he'll sort of take them and disappear for like a minute or two and he'll come back with this um, this, this really old but it looks like it's barely being held together and it's in that same it's, it's, it's like a black leather bound. There's no title on it, no markings on it whatsoever. And when he opens it up, you can tell it's that same sort of indecipherable writing as what's on the page that you would take from the Black Spider. He'll leaf through it, and he'll find an identical page. Well, not identical, it's handwritten. Um, both of the pages are handwritten. 
but you'll find the same page in his book. So it appears as if the black man had taken it with him. The book that Jeeves has doesn't have the writings and the scribblings that, that Neznar's did. And he'll look down at Neznar's version and read that word that appeared to be a name that was un- untranslatable, um, that Dothgalad. I, I, I do think I recognize this. And he'll unfurl this, again, very ancient map of the continent. Very ancient dialect. He is going to point at the far island. The ancient map, you see that same uh, name, Dothgalad. All right, so it's a place. That's, that's far. And Trog, you will recognize that place. Yeah, it's that place. After he points it out. You don't know it as Dothgalad. But you recognize it as a place that, generally speaking, your people are forbidden from going to. As well as the elves. The elves have the same sort of... The elves tell, are, are sort of forbidden people from going there. Yeah, I was always told not to go there. Well, it's good. I, I mean, we can just know to avoid that place, then. If it's forbidden, it's probably forbidden for a reason. I mean, I, all this is, is awful. I think that the all this stuff should be sent to the proper people who can handle that. I mean, there's got to be people like uh, this, this fucking guy pointing at, at Angel. Like, he can get friends together or whatever and take care of it. I, I'm more interested in the person that I'm looking for, uh, the one that I, I was, was telling Jeeves about originally. I, all this extra stuff, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to me. Just the, the group that he is with is part of the group that's doing this stuff. I'm just trying to find them. I don't care about whatever else is going on. So do you know anything about this group or not? No, says uh, the bald guy. But if you're looking for the people who are looking for the orbs, then you might know where they're going next. And I'll sort of gesture to the um, Neznar's ripped out page, where again, there's four blank circles along that 12-pointed star. If we have two, there might be two left. Well, if that's the case, instead of going somewhere that we don't know, can we take the two that we do have and find somewhere to hold them up and protect them and, you know, sneak word out that, hey, there's these orbs here and then we set up an ambush or something. And then that way they have to come to us. I don't think you understand. Devils, devils, demons. All of these are coming after these. I, I, I don't think I care. I, I mean, I, I'm, all of this, it sounds terrible. It really does. And I wish you the best. But that's not why we're doing this. I mean, if we can send something out to say, hey, come and find it. And then, and then my brother comes and tries to get it. And then we're just, we're ready. And then we get him and then we go. And then I'm just going to look at the rest of the group. I don't know. I, I feel like I've been taking, dragging y'all around on this shit, and I don't want to go to school and, and... I can tell you right now, I didn't sign up to fight any fucking gods, demons, devils, what is all this bullshit? Jeeves will, probably, Jeeves will speak up a bit and be like, well, I, unfortunately, whether you like it or not, it seems you've already been marked and changed by what's been going on. What are you talking about? I've seen what happens to the people that have contact with these orbs. It's not pleasant. I pull a child's drawing out of my pocket, unfurl it, and I just stare at it. I'm going to point my rapier at, uh, at Jeebus. All right, old man. It's time for you to stop speaking in fucking riddles. What are you talking about? Mocked. Ending not well. Be plainly. Well, as I said, the the group that re- the group that recovered the first orb just shells of themselves by the time they came back. I don't think they met pleasant ends. Well, frogs don't have shells, so I think I'll be safe. <laughs> <laughs> For the sake of argument, if this is something that we decide to pursue. I'm not saying that's what we're doing. How would we get to Dothgillen? 
Is there, I mean, I, I saw you teleported in. Can you just bamf us there and we spend an afternoon, you know, grabbing what we need and then we can come back? Or we got to take the long way around? Well, that's, uh, the, the ball guy speaks up. That's mostly a matter for the elves. He said it's not a place they tend to let people go without good reason. All right. And do you have contacts at the Elven Isles? Can you? Send us somewhere relatively close and have us speak to someone there. I can make contact with with someone there. Yes, not saying that's what we're doing, but I just it, logistically, I'm just seeing what our options are. Who else is going to be made aware that these are here? Nobody outside this room. Because we should do something to make these two orbs that we do have more secure if they're looking for them. We can't leave two together. That's easy pickings. I agree. I agree. And we don't know how they're going to interact. We could potentially take one with us to track the others. Maybe. I mean, I, I don't know how comfortable I feel dragging one along. Um, I guess we were this whole time, and I, I felt fine, right? Is everyone okay with us carrying it? You said like, you're I didn't, looking, I didn't for notice your, anything. looking for your brother, and he's coming for the orbs. So we kill two birds with one stone if we take this one with us to the Isles. Well, if something happens to us, it could very easily wind up in the wrong hands. So, I don't know. Is, uh, is this something that, and I'm talking to uh, uh, Jeevis and Nesnar now, is this something that the king is going to be made aware of? Because it probably should be. Nesnar is the black spider. <laughs> this oh, guy didn't oh, get oh. Name yet. <laughs> oh, well, what is your name? It's uh, Senor Shy, I thought. Mr. Clean. Hmm? Talon. <laughs> Call me Archmage Talon. Talon. Is this something the king's going to be made aware of? That's a delicate subject, but no. This is not something that the guy in charge will know about what if an army comes here trying to grab this thing or if things start blowing up in a city like how how is that going to be explained well the, the build up the, the war has been even the ceasefire of the war has been quite fortuitous in that sense i mean you've seen the military encampments all around so it'll be hard for a ragtag group of cultists to break their way in i believe well it, it may or may not be ragtag i mean if if uh, this the guy in all black here is telling the truth, then uh, <laughs> I mean there could be darkness coming for this place. With the study we've done on the orb, I th I do believe we can contain. I I look at Jeevis and the other guy and just deadpan. You heard of Mabara? Thirty years ago, great darkness came to Mabara. Nothing that they could do could stop it. You think you can stop that here? With objects such as this, I can make no guarantees. I don't think any of us can. Well, y'all, I, I mean, I, I see two paths ahead. Uh, either we draw them out and have them come for us for the orb or orbs that we have, or we go to this other place and try to find the one there, and maybe that's where Valk will be. I don't know how I feel about either one. I feel like we're in our in over our heads either way, but it's not a decision that I want to make alone. If we're doing this together, I, I want to have maybe a, a vote. I guess all in favor of finding somewhere to hold up and waiting for them to hunt us uh, say I. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all, <laughs> all in favor of us going to Dothgalad. I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of going to this Dothgalad, but uh, I don't like uh, just sitting around here with my thumb in my ass. So. I've never been one to be hunted down. So. I'd rather be proactive than reactive. You know what I mean. I don't know what they're up to. None of us do, but I, I worry that every day that Valk is with them, 
it's worse for him. So if going somewhere, no matter how dangerous, puts us closer to him, even by a day, then that's what I want to do. So um, if there is no other option other than just sitting here, I think that we should go to the aisles. I suppose that's three out of four, because I don't give a shit about this motherfucker. Mooney, how do you feel? Honestly, I... I don't know. It feels like we've wrapped ourselves up in something um, bigger than even I expected. I, I feel like we've been over our heads for weeks now. Uh, and we knew, we knew things were going to get tough. Yes, kid, I agree, but I am not feeling the same. I think Jeeves was right. I, the touch is gone a bit. I still want to help you with your brother. And again, I believe this all ties up with the spectrals of the forest, but this is, this is tough. And I'm saying this um, personally. It's getting harder. You know, whatever we, the rest of us end up doing, you don't have to come, right? We can always meet back up when we're finished with my stuff. We, I, I, I know that I will because I still owe you. You know more than, more than you know I owe you. But there's no, you're not beholden to us. And if you want to stay here and keep an eye on. Me, then, you know, and, and maybe there's stuff that you can learn about the astrals here at the library or with, of, of the, the specters, the, the things that you're, these ghosts, maybe you can learn more here. I perk up at the mention of ghosts and I like, I offer out, I, I am a blood hunter. Problems do you have with these ghosts? Spectrals have been uh, invading for the past few months or so. Wraiths, anything that um, spell fear when you look at them. Trying to get rid of them, and seems like a lot of this is tying in. Being a, a blood hunter, would I know like anything about the so possible sources, factors? There could be quite a lot. We can um, how like specters and ghosts come about into being. Um, not necessarily something on this scale, though. The, the, the scale of it is, is much different than anything you'd be accustomed to. Okay. Once our business with the orbs is concluded, it's my duty. It would be my honor to help you. Thank you, Angel. Uh, you really don't need to, but we can see what it comes down to. And I'm going to stand there, uh, walk around a bit, look around the, the insides of the library. But I'll eventually go up to Kid. Try to crack half a smile. Uh, I just want to let you know I'm still in. As far as we have to go. That's why I got this. And slap the armor. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, I know the only time any of y'all have met Valk, he's been actively trying to kill you. Um, but I promise that outside of that, he's a much better person. He's a, he's a really good guy when he's not trying to commit homicide. I believe it. Uh, as you can see, past few days, um, sometimes we have bad moods when we're not trying to. Yeah. Are you all right, by the way? Not really. I don't know what it is specifically, but try to get there. All right. Well, maybe uh, I can hold on to the orb for a little bit. If we're deciding to take it, I can keep it in my vessel. Um, and maybe, you know, the guy that I follow is able to partition it off or something. 
it's just a thought. It might not be bad to, in the meantime, keep it in another pocket dimension or something. That would be a good idea. At least that way I won't have to worry about shake my head towards Angel. Um, more people following us. I knew you were coming, by the way. All right. No, I don't say no. anything. <laughs> <laughs> I and the orb is still laying on the still ground. Still has Rickon's right? underwear on his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I knew you were coming. <laughs> up, whenever he says about containment in the vessel, I say the orb corrupts all it touches. Is your patron powerful enough? I mean, he's the most powerful thing that I know, I know of, but I'm not as well versed in that realm of things as maybe you are. But I think he can handle it. I've seen the power of this. It calls devils to it. It calls celestials to it. Patron on par with a devil or a celestial. I think so. I'm just going to light up a little fire in my hand. For what it's worth, <laughs> very tiny in the grand scheme of things, but in kids' eyes, it's the coolest fucking thing ever. I think he'll be all right, and it's better than keeping it, you know, on our person if it's bothering us or, you know, if we get attacked by bandits in the middle of the night. I mean, I'm I'm the only one who can access this, and if I go down, then, you know, one of y'all could if whoever gets to it first after, but it'll at least. uh I don't know. It's like putting it in a safe or something. Give another nod. Um, it's still laying on the on the ground, correct? What the orb? No, um, the arch archmage Tillin is now holding it in his hands. I'm gonna take that back from you. Y'all can keep the one that you have, but you know we're gonna go and grab this other one. But this one's coming with us. Good work. I don't know about putting it in another dimension, but it's worth a shot. Well, yeah, I guess we'll find out. Um, I'm going to for a little bit um, after I drop this off. I y'all are saying, but just in case, you know, he wants to talk to me after I bring that in there, I'm going to stay in there a little bit. So um, y'all are running the show and then I'm just going to vamp into that thing with the orb. Okay, so you get sucked in. Um, so after um, Kid mentioned um, the spectrals here, uh, can I uh, can I check with uh, Jeevus and Archmaid Tillin? Uh, so uh, as you have heard, the spectrals in the in the Northern Forest, um, uh, we have also seemed to have seen um, uh, zombies, Thunder Tree, uh, heard of some in uh, the old Owlwell. Uh, is there anything you have heard of in uh, somewhere around Schleem? I have heard before that the, the Elven Isles are probably my best bet, which is where we seem to be heading. Well, the Elves are more in tune with the spiritual world, spiritual world in general, I'd say, than any of the other races. If you're going to stay for a few days, you could come with me. We'll maybe do a bit of research together, see what we can find. We've, we've heard a few rumors from the north, but nothing concrete. Uh, yes, if the group decides to stay, that's, that sounds good. But whatever they do, I will be with them. You know, I think we owe the main to our... At least hang out for a couple of weeks. Figure out what we can land. About this place, and, and, and at least this hometown, I mean, we're doing so much for for the kid, and and I, I really think it would be right for, to let, let Manny do a little learning here. And then I chime up, I believe I also owe an explanation. It's a lot to ask you to travel with someone you don't know. And then... I'll give like a background of of what happened in in Mabira. Anyway, the gist the gist of it is there was another orb there. Some crazy shit happened. Everyone died. A lot of people died. The end. <laughs> oh, okay. The short story. The short and skinny of it. When I go into the vessel, 
does anything happen with the orb first off, like immediately when I go inside? It's cold. You don't expect it to be so cold when you go inside. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Especially because your boy's a hot boy. I know. Do I do I feel his presence in here at all? No. Fuck. Did you just break your shit? I I'm gonna be keeping this in here for a while. I don't know how you feel about that or if it's okay. But we need to keep this safe for now, and I think in here is the best way to do that. The next time that I come through Fondling, that mine should have produced plenty of ore for me to bring to you. So just be patient with me. I I know I'm new to this and that I'm asking a lot. So thank you. And uh, if I absolutely do not feel him at all in here, then I'll come back out and leave the orb inside. Okay, so again, you guys hear that as he suddenly just slurps out next to you? Well, uh, that works, at least, but uh, I'm not sure how the, the man upstairs feels about it. We need to figure out uh, how we're getting to the aisles. At your mention of the man upstairs, I kind of visually seem irritated, and I go, there are no men upstairs, and just kind of... Well, I can tell already that we are going to get along great. I can tell you I'm enjoying every minute of this. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's take a couple days. Let's uh, rest a little bit and maybe continue our shopping, whatever we need to get, and then figure out how we're getting to the aisles, what our plan is. Right.